welcome to track number three of How to Survive in Ephesus. How many feel that God is speaking to you so far? What is God saying to you? Huh? Where are your grapes? Alright. Where are your grapes? Amen. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 1. We are moving on. Hallelujah. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, my own son. Amen. Unto Timothy, my own son. In the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace. From God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, and peace. These are things we need. Is that not so? Grace, mercy, and peace. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went to Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. Amen. Now, the first thing we are going through, uh, we, have, we, have, we have now started the camp. Amen. We are seeing the first instruction of Paul to one of his uh, workers. Amen. And he said, Unto Timothy, my own son. Amen. Now, in the ministry, if you are going to do well, you must become a son or a daughter. Hallelujah. So you can call it becoming a son. Are you listening? Okay. If you are going to do well in the ministry, you have to become a son. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, turn with me there quickly. Verse. Keep your hand in 1 Timothy. We're going right back there. It says in verse 14, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Amen. But though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel wherefore I beseech you be ye followers of me amen now if you are going to become something in the ministry come out you are going to have to be a son amen why, why am I saying that? Listen carefully. How many of you want to become something in the ministry? Huh? Are you sure? What I am about to share with you, although it will not be very long, is actually the most important secret of all to doing, becoming something in the ministry. Can I have an amen? The explanation to this can be found if you go into the town of Sydney, where we went last night, what are those places called? Where those high buildings are? Darling Harbour. Have you been to Darling Harbour before? And where else? Secular Key. 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 Okay. Secular Key. Where, where, which, one, which one was Secular Key? Ah, okay. That building is called Secular Key. That area, secular key. Okay. I have to remember this thing so that when somebody asks me, I can say I have also been to Australia. <laughs> secular key, Darling Harbour. What else? Town Hall. And where else did you where else did you see there? What is that bridge called? Huh?
They are for individuals. Mr. Mahfoud, who do you think they belong to? They don't belong to any government. HSBC Bank, that building, who does it belong to? Huh? To people. All the houses here. This place we are very big. Who does it belong to? That means it belongs to somebody. Maybe it's a group of people, but it belongs to individuals. So do you think there's money in Australia? Do you think there are rich people here? How many think there are rich people in Australia? Are they very rich? Huh? Very, very, very rich people. How about uh, Sierra Leone? Are there rich people there? Do you have rich people in Sierra Leone? With, huh? Corrupted rich ones. But there are people who have a lot of money in Sierra Leone. Is that not so? A lot of money. You know that. How about Nigeria? Ash. More millionaires. Give me a chair. There are very rich people. I, I, I stayed in a hotel one day in Nigeria. The pastor uh, told me that the uh, owner of the hotel, I think he was keeping his money in uh, the water tank. Have you seen the water tanks that you put up there? <laughs> yeah, one of the generals, you know, they, they, he had uh, these water tanks and uh, he was keeping, they were all full of dollars up in the air outside. Millions of dollars. When they caught him, I think they, they, they found the money. So there are rich people. Is that not so? Yeah. One guy, he told me about some money that he paid. He made a lot of money. He paid more than one million dollars tight. So people have money. Is that not so? The houses show that there's money. But how many realize that you can be in Sydney, you never see that money? Huh? You personally, you never see that. You may never have 10,000 in your bank. Huh? Even 1,000, you may never have. What do you think? One day I went to London and I saw some of my church members. And I said, look, I want to meet some people who are doing business. I mean, business uh, people or people who have been here. So I gathered them and I asked you, how long have you been here? I said, seven years. Said, how long have you been here? Ten years. How long have you been in London? Nine years. How long have you been here? Five years. Most have been there for more than five years, some twelve years and so on. So I said, ah, you have stayed in the rich man's country for a long time. So now I need... 500 pounds from all of you and I asked how many can give 500 pounds cash now right now only one person could give the rest of them didn't have 500 pounds so I told them that I know people in Ghana who can give 500 pounds easily and a lot of people in Nigeria Ghana, Nigerians see Ghanaians as poor and proud. Because they feel we don't have much. And it's true, we don't have so much like they have. But, uh, so these my my brethren, they have stayed in London for a long time. And they did not have 500 pounds or 1,000 pounds. America too, they say, if I call right now, I'm trying to do fundraising and I need... Ten people to give thousand dollars, you will see epilepsy will come into the room. So sometimes you realize that we can travel and we go far, but the actual money of the place, the, the leg is on the thing. The actual money of that place never comes into our hands. Is that not so? Huh? Yeah. If you think that the white people here are struggling 
when they see something five dollars they are thinking about it two dollars ten dollars they spend there are many people here they spend a lot of money they don't think they don't think twice about it at all they spend thousands they buy one share thousand dollars I'm sure some of you also have shirts like that I don't, I don't know why you would like to wear a shirt for a thousand dollars or even five hundred dollars what's wrong with you <laughs> so you see you can be near inside working around but you never actually enter it one day I went to a golf course in England owned by a Japanese man two huge golf course one man in England I say people have money money <laughs> but I didn't see any Ghanaian there at the golf course white people these children of whatever all of them there so I realized that you can come near around within circulate but actually to get the money you don't get it do you know why you know why I want to explain you to you something you want to know why I'm talking about anointing not money if you think I'm teaching you how to get money that's not what I'm teaching you but it will also help you to understand money flows within families from father to son to grandson it, it stays within the session it's not common for people to break into the family or to become a new wealthy family uh, it stays within the lines like that what do you think So the money of Australia, although it looks as though it's available to all, <laughs> there are some streams where the money, the big money is flowing along those streams. Like that. So we are crossing with bridges under, through, but the actual money, that's why you can be here for 20 years, you still will not have anything. That's why sometimes I tell people that, you see, you are here, the thing you thought you were going to get you are still not getting that's why it's better to but Jesus said that if he that drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never taste again it's flowing the fam- you see if I take my family back home in Ghana my, my grandfather had a lot of money is this Sandra? is it not true? that's also your gran- was he also your grandfather? is my grandfather your grandfather? And that's your great grandfather. Your great grandfather had a lot of money. My grandfather had a lot. He had horses, had houses. In fact, today in Accra, there is a section, there are sections of the city which actually belonged to him and, and still do belong to the family. There's an area called Tesano. The whole area is for, for the Hewitt Mills family. My father also had money, a little le- much less, but he still had. And I also have money. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about I'm talking about family. You see, through my family I was able to go to school, to medical school. Do you understand? And my house that I live in, it's from my family. Direct. And I have other things that come straight from my family. So you realize that you see the buildings in the world but they are going along certain families. Although we'll be working, 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 working for the thing to, uh, for you to actually be in the stream is when you actually see the Australian money. Let me tell you what you are experiencing in any here. That's not the money that the Australians are eating and chopping here. It's not the money that you are talking about. I'm telling you. How many think that what I'm saying is true? Huh? So to break into that system requires sometimes a miracle. It actually takes a miracle. 
to be able to really break through here that's why people go and start doing cocaine and other things to try to use a way to enter the money world but it's not easy I tell you it's not easy so money flows along certain lines even power even in America you see that the presidential things you see it's like almost like some family something Bush has been there his son is now there and you see that certain lines are presidential lines and once then even the name comes up the person becomes a good candidate because it's almost as though there are certain families that are along a certain line it's the same thing with the work of God and the ministry the anointing do you see it's like that it's also there flowing along certain lines family do you see it's not something that is brought from heaven it's something that is here already and it's something that flows but it flows along the family the certain tribes or certain lines that God has already created which you can join if you are wise you see there is something we call spiritual inheritance in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 he said that, that God may give you uh, open the eyes of your understanding that you may and give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation uh, you want to read it uh, let's read it I think you want to read it soon Let's read Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. That the God of your, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him. Uh, you see what He's praying? That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. How many want the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened? Okay. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. How many want to know the hope that you have now that God has called you? Good. And, and that you may know the, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints are. Ah, hallelujah. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to what us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Now notice he says And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance In the saints This inheritance Is it an inheritance of gold and silver It is an inheritance of something spiritual Do you see So in the realm of the spirit There are things that are inherited Are you understanding Just as in the natural There are things that are inherited there are things that are inherited spiritually and you have to belong to the family for that inheritance to be given to you is it easy to understand this one if you've been to class 3 you, you can easily understand it how many have been to our past class 3 most of us are past class 3 you get it so just as the money is along certain lines the anointing and the spirit and the blessing for ministry is also along certain lines and to be to benefit from that anointing and to actually join the power stream just like how it's not easy to join the money stream you have to join the family stream the power stream where the anointing is and when you do so you become a son or a daughter just like Paul said he said that to my son Timothy not to my employee Timothy to my son Timothy you have to actually become a son or a daughter for you to actually be now part of a family or a part of a line of spiritual wealth so that the thing will pass naturally to you you see, when you are a son or a daughter, you don't have to struggle for certain things to be given to you. When my father died, you see the prodigal son, the Bible said a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, 
Father, give me the portion of goods that fallen to me. And he divided unto them his living. Not many days after, the younger took his journey to a far country, and there wasted his substance on riotous living. And when he had, and the story goes on. Now, this boy, he asked his father for his things. But I didn't ask my father for anything. But when my father died, he gave me, do you understand, his property. So when we went to court, he wrote, he said, this is the will of my father, uh, Mr. Uh, and then he would know this is that and that. I bequeath my this and this at this place to this, to my hotel. I give it to my son and my daughter this and my this, that. And he gave all his things, all of his things to his children. Not even, he had a lot of workers and a lot of cousins really. He didn't give anybody and just his took direct. Do you blame somebody for giving his things to his children? <laughs> then why are you jealous? Why have you become quiet? <laughs> you don't want somebody to give his things to his child? He didn't give it to anybody. He just gave it to his children. Do you understand? Can you blame him? No. Yeah. It's natural. Easy. My sons in this ministry and my daughters they inherit naturally the anointing that is upon my life. It just flows. They don't have, they don't have to pray for it. They don't have to ask for it. it come, because what is yours comes to you. You don't even ask for it. It comes naturally. And the reason why many people don't become anything in God and in their ministry because they never become sons and they never become daughters. It's different from being a member. It's different from being an employee. To become a son and to become a daughter is the most important thing in the ministry. But most people don't know. It takes humility to follow somebody. He says, as my beloved sons, I warn you. And I beseech you therefore, be you followers of me. Anybody who is a real son or real daughter is now the follower of someone you see i i have a spiritual father i'm not just in the ministry like that i have a spiritual father a father in the ministry who i have followed do you understand it's a spiritual thing so i don't know him physically but i know him spiritually because you don't need to talk to somebody physically to know him spiritually i followed him through his books and through his tapes. Do you understand? And I have experienced naturally passing from him things that God has given him that have come to me. The person I'm talking about is Kenneth Hagin. He died last week. And I was very sad when he died. Many of you have heard of Kenneth Hagin. Yeah. Because even though I, I, you see, when I grew up and I was born and I was in Ghana, I didn't have any way of joining the anointing streams. Because the power and the anointing, it flows along certain lines. Where is Daggy what is going to get anointing from? And where does he come from to become a, a pastor? Who is, you see, my father and my mother were not even, they were not even taking me to church. Or maybe they took me to church. I mean, I didn't get born again in my house. I, I went to school and I got born again as scripture. You know, it's not from my family. And I don't know anybody who is carrying a certain anointing. And when I look on, on the television and other things, I can see these are the men of God in the system. So what do I have to do? That's what I'm saying. That you can be in Sydney. The money is there. I tell you, if one of the Australians comes to adopt you, how many realize that your struggles will end? <laughs> No, how many realize your struggles will end? If they come and adopt you and, and they say that now, uh, what, the, what, what Australian name do you have? No, a uh, surname. Parker. And you are Boko. David Boko. 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 David Boko. And you say, and now Mr. Parker, he comes and he says that, you know, I just like you. I want to adopt you. I want to change your name from Boko to Parker. 
you are going to be my son. <laughs> How many realize that your some of your financial this thing may end suddenly? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and you see how it is and no matter how long you are here as David Boko how, how many years have you been here? <laughs> David how long have you been here? <laughs> huh? 13 years so I'm going to require from you 5,000 <laughs> <laughs> it may not be easy for my brother to give us 5,000 so you realize that by joining the family you sort of just enter a line where things natural Mr. Parker's houses his money maybe he owns some of the story, story buildings at Darling Star City Star City all that you see you will become a millionaire do you see instantly how by adoption so in the ministry you need to be adopted and you need to make yourself an adopted son or daughter otherwise you will always watch anointed people from afar but you never become anointed because the thing it is in family lines so how could I come along by following you understand closely believing because a child or a son or a daughter there are many characteristics our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name a child looks to his father and admires the father hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come that thy will be done if you are my son or my daughter in the ministry you will not want your will you want what does he want for me Thy will be done. Give me this day my daily bread. Supply me. That's why my sons are interested in what I'm preaching and what I'm saying. They want my they want daily bread, they understand, and provision. Give me this day my daily bread. And forgive us uh, our sins. A real father has a big heart to accommodate all some of you when you came to this church, you were very some way. You have changed. But Pastor Peter has not sent you to hell already. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Because a father has a heart to accommodate all kinds of nonsense. Yeah. Some of us say we don't pay tithes, but we are in the church smiling. <laughs> we know we were not born just on Tuesday. We have been born for some time. Do you understand? I'm a pastor for some time, so I know. I don't need to. A, a lot of things, you see, when we were going just now, Pastor Peter was saying that what I was preaching about is as though he has talked to me he has not told me anything all that I am just talking I am just preaching my own I have not talked with him but he has not said anything that's why I said that after I have come here your pastor has not said anything bad about anybody to me or anything I am just sharing with you from my heart I hope you understand what I am saying yeah so I know some of the things I am just preaching and God is speaking to you take it and then move on Amen. Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtor. And what? Lead us not into temptation. You will believe and trust that your father is going to lead you away from bad things. But when you are not a son, and I, and I come and I tell you, I want to lead you into financial person, I want you to plant a seed, you will not believe that I'm leading you away from that. Rather, you will believe that I'm leading you into your financial downfall. That is why you will not even give. You understand anything I say let's go if I say let's go and go and preach there you say oh this one it will bring my downfall uh, if I go and start a church there or if I go and do this or if I go and preach it will bring me down but a son believes that his father has the power to lead him not into temptation for instance we had a camp like this I preached it is only Pastor Peter who decided to become a missionary the whole camp was about missionary only one person he's the only one and he decided to just leave London and come here you understand so although you preach to a lot of people not everybody believes and not everybody is a son not everybody is a daughter Lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil 
for thine is the power. You believe that your father has something. That's why Elijah, when Elijah was going to die, he said, when he asked Elijah, what do you want? Name it. You want my house? You want my car? You want my wife? What do you want? And Elijah said, I like, I like the anointing. The anointing that you have. He was a wise person. He knew that the anointing produces all those other things. That what I want from you is this thing. Let it come to me naturally. Amen. So that's why Paul said to Timothy, My son, Timothy. When you read all through, he always calls him his son. He doesn't call him his pastor. He doesn't call him his associate. He doesn't call him his colleague. He doesn't call him his equal. He doesn't call him his employee. He doesn't call him whatever. He says, My son. My son. I'm sharing with you the greatest secret of the ministry. My daughter. One day somebody came to say, Papa I was talking to me. People like calling me Papa. So one day somebody was calling me Papa. I, I said, I sat down. I said, sit down. You, sit down. So I sat down. And I said, why, why do you call me Papa? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, because you are my father. You know, she was talking, because you are my father, Bishop. You are my father. So I called you Papa. I said, I am your father. I was sitting in the church on, on the stage. In the cathedral. I said, you call me father. Then I saw my children running there. And I said, look at my children. And I said to her, you are not my daughter. You are not my son. You are my church member. Oh, Bishop, don't say that. I'm your daughter. I said, you are not my daughter. <laughs> you are not my daughter. <laughs> then I said to her, my children look like me. When you see my children running here, you can see me. My children have some resemblance to me. There is something about them that lets you know that he's just like his father. Sometimes when I walk, people say, you walk like your father. And I say, who should I walk like? I always walk like my father. <laughs> so I said, my children walk, they, they look like me. And, and, and she said, and I said, yeah, they look like me. Then I said, you. There is no similarity between me and you. Oh, Bishop, don't say that. I said, no, there is no similarity. I said, are you a shepherd? Do you do the work of God? I said, when I was in school, as you were in school, I was doing the work of God, I was preaching. There is no similarity. You are in the church. I said, you are just a VNP. You know VNP. In the church, we have different people. We have VIP, very important people. VSP, very significant people. VNP, very nice people. Very nice people. They are just nice in the church. They smile. They always like the message. They always come and tell you that the message was nice. Then we have VDP, very dangerous people. In the <laughs> Do you see? So I said, you are just a VNP. You are a very nice person in the church, but you are not my daughter and you are not my son. There is no similarity between me and you. Amen. Amen. So you can call somebody Papa, 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 or whatever you want to say, but it is you can go and stand inside a garage and say, I'm a BMW. You are not. You are not a BMW. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can go and stand in McDonald's and say, I'm a Big Mac. I'm a hamburger. You are not a hamburger. Do you understand? You, you, you become that by taking up certain characteristics. Amen. So I see you becoming sons and daughters. Because until you become a son and a daughter, you, you will be a member. You will be in the system. But So I don't have so many sons and daughters. I have a lot of... Even many of my pastors are not my sons in the ministry. Yeah. And many of them are. Do you understand? But you can be a pastor in the church, but you may not be a real son. And the sons today are in degrees. Some are more. Can't you see that some children they look? One day I saw some. I said, "Is that your child?" He said, "What? Well, you are fair. He's dark. How can it be?" Do you see? But there are some children like that. They are their children, but they are a little different. And you don't know where. Then you realize that uh, you have an uncle who looks like this child. Uh, so you see that it's an uncle's child. <laughs> So Paul said, be followers of me, I beseech you. And that's why Paul said, we read it. He said, you have 
thousand instructors but you don't have many fathers so in the ministry if you are going to become something and do something for the Lord and in the ministry my friend you have to become a son and you have to become a daughter to so become a son and a daughter I have a, I have a father spiritual father in the ministry Papa Hagen and I followed him in the ministry his books, his tapes oh always listening to his books uh, his tapes and his books and I bet I can't see anything wrong with him uh, of course he must have a lot of problems and sins and uh, mistakes just like everybody but I don't see that because a son when a child is 4 years old do you think my son can see my fault as a husband eh? he will never see it he will only see that I have toffee I lie or I no lie yeah a real child he only sees that your father is good. it is when you are growing up to try and become a colleague of your father or your mother that you start to look at your mother or your father and criticize and say that you don't look after my mommy very well you treat my mother like this and my mother has, has suffered too much my mother deserves better than she has experienced it's when your eyes have opened and you are no more a child that you start to see critically and when you are in the church you see when you are a son and a daughter your eyes are not on my my faults are there I have faults I'm sitting I have faults I have problems my back is paining me <laughs> you get what I'm saying there are so many things if you want to see faults but you see a child does not see faults an equal sees faults a, a colleague sees faults by a son and a daughter I'm talking about a child they don't see things that way they see good and, and whatever one day I went somebody somebody gave me a book he has written a book about Kenneth Hagin a whole book the book is called A Different Gospel he was pointing out that Kenneth Hagin was preaching a different gospel from the what the gospel that is in the Bible he wrote various quotations and he was trying to prove that Kenneth Hagin's books he had copied it from another book so he brought the other book put the other book by the side when I looked through the book I rather became more I had more faith in Kenneth Hagin <laughs> and I rather saw aspects of his ministry you know and I just looked at the book one to three and I just read somewhere but you see when you are a son you see and it is only a son who will receive do you know Mr. Shafat? Mr. Shafat Mr. Shafat is a guy in the Bible he's Elijah's father when you go read your Bible say Elijah son of Shafat uh-huh, that's Mr. Shabbat. <laughs> <laughs> Elijah, son of Shabbat. Even though, even though, Elijah had a father called Shabbat. When Elijah was taken to heaven, you should have seen Elijah shouting, My father, my father! Have you seen that? My father, my father. That's what he said. Although his, uh, he, sorry, Elisha's father was Shaphat. Although Elisha's real father is Mr. Shaphat. Elijah has now become his father. That's why the natural response was, My father, my father. Until somebody, you see, until a man of God becomes a father to you, it is not likely that his spiritual inheritance will come to you. It's not likely that it will happen. You'll be blessed by his ministry. You'll receive his teachings. You will say, Praise the Lord. And you'll say, Oh, that's a great man of God. But it's not likely that the actual inheritance will ever come to you. It, it takes something to become a son, it's not easy. Because you can't easily follow somebody, especially if your eyes are open and you can see faults and mistakes. You see, take somebody like Sandra. When she was in Ghana, she didn't join the church. Because she's Heward Mills. So she knows, she knows my, you know my father? Did you know my father? You know my father, 
relatives, whatever. She said, what bills? I mean, what bills? She will have a lot of things that she know. She has had this, that. I have, I don't know, only, I have only one relative who comes to my church. He's our pastor in Geneva. He's my cousin, very, my best man. Apart from, you know, how of my relatives come to, to church. My mother. I don't relatives, all the people. Oh, they are just here and here, they don't come. Okay, my uncle comes now. One of my uncles come. But oh, they don't come. My cousins, nephews, nieces, cousins, nobody comes. Even I don't know them in the natural. <laughs> I don't even see them. If I see them, I wouldn't know that it's them. It's true. <laughs> it is a wonderful thing. Because and there are people who don't like me because they didn't like my father. You see? So they call me Azobile or the son of this man. Uh-huh. So when you see me in that way, you see, how can I become your father spiritually? How can a bad person become your father spiritually? Your eyes have to be, you see, hallowed be thy name. That's, that's it. my our father. When you, when you want to understand fully how a child should be, if you want to become a son or a daughter, always read the Lord's Prayer. It's because Jesus himself prescribed how a child is to relate to their father. He said, our father, which art high. You have to see your father as high, not equal. That's why some of my classmates and others find it difficult. That's our father, which art up. <laughs> not our father, which are in class together. You see, I can't sleep be in the same classroom. <laughs> You, you, are you understanding certain things now? That's why you really see that your classmates are following you or your, the people who know. It's our father which are up there. Our father which are in the classroom together. Or which our father which is younger than us. That's why rarely can you have somebody who is older than you who receives. I've got some people like that. They are older than me but they see me as my father. Lots of times when they say, Papa, this and that, I feel even shy. But they, uh, they feel that I'm their father. When I was talking to an elderly lady, she had been married for 25 years. She said, you are my father. That is, you are all that I have. <laughs> Our father, which are there. You don't see yourself as someone said, we are all, I preach and you preach. I lay hands and they fall down. You too, you lay hands and fall down. Then that's all. We are all anointed. Our father, which are there. Hallowed be thy admiration. When you say hallow praises. But for every father, there will be people who hate him. So if you become a son, if you become a daughter, then you can really enter the stream. I see in a big church like Lighthouse, you can easily be seen because they can appoint you as a pastor. Because you have to do some exams, be in the system for some time. If you you become a pastor, you'll be doing the work. So it doesn't mean that you'll be anointed. Uh huh. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can easily... It's like medicine. There are people who are doctors who are not doctors. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I tell you... I, when I was uh, uh, in the hospital one time, eh, there was this guy who came around. I tell you, he told me, look, where I went to school, they, they, it's wholesale passing. It was not training in Ghana. Wholesale, we just passed. He told me, I don't know anything. Please teach me how to clock a patient. When we say clack a patient, these are, you sit down and you, what's your problem? I'm coughing. When I wee wee, it is painful. Uh, my hair is paining me. My this is paining me. My back and all those. You say, okay. Then you have to ha- ask some questions. Then you have to examine the person. Here, 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 here. You have to know where you are examining, why you are examining, what you are looking for. He doesn't know it. That's what we learned in medical school third year. And if you are a doctor, that's what you do all the time. If you tell me right now that when you wee wee is painful, I have about three or four questions to ask you. That will tell. If you tell me that when you be with there is blood, I will ask you: Does the blood come first? Does it come last, or does it come with the urine mixed? They are all three different things. One means something bad. One means something not so bad. Something one means you are dead. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you see, this guy, he has been to medical school. He didn't know it at all. 
Although he was doctor, he right when he write doctor so and so, and he told me, he said, brother, help me, I don't know anything. But I, had, I sat down with my roots. When this is, these are the questions you have to ask. This, 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 this is what you have to do. And I thought, but he's a complete qualified doctor. Even the medical students knew more than he knew. So there are doctors, you can have certificate, paper, everything, approved, appointed by government, but in reality, you are not a doctor. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. You can look like a woman, but you are not a woman. You can look like a Christian, but you are not a Christian. Oh yeah. You can look like a woman, but you are not a woman. One day, I was in the consulting room and a young lady came there. And I was with my boss. Uh, he was in the other place. When this lady came in there, he knew her. He knew the pay already. And he said, oh, this is an interesting case. You guys examine her. Find out what's going on. Okay, now this girl was 20, 20 years old. She has never had a period before. I said, ah, so, well, what is the problem and so on. So we examined her. We tried to find out. We examined her and all that. Uh, then when the professor came, he came and said, this is a man. <laughs> it's a man. It's a man who looks like a woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see, that's why when you are going to marry, you must pray. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She looks completely, I examined her myself. I, she looks completely normal, breast, everything, the body, everything. No, it looks like a woman, but she's a man. She's a man because she has testes. You know testes? Balls. You know what balls are? Uh, she has two. Inside. But they are inside. They haven't come out. Yeah. And then she's a wo- she doesn't have a womb. But the womb is inside. You can't see. You have to examine to know that it's, it's not there. But she looks like a woman. She's in school, everything. You know now. And they are, when they are like that, they are all of them in the family. Like that. One, two, three, like that. And you see beautiful girls. No more, everything. You see that? Like that, everything. That they are all men. <laughs> 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 That's how some pastors are. They look everything with Bible and all that, but they are not pastors. They look men of God, everybody, but they are not men of God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, but none of you here has that disease. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. No, there are some women who are not. They are not. Uh, Sometimes, sometimes uh, doctors, we have to take a decision. We have to take a decision to make somebody into a woman. Yeah, but to, to turn him into a man or a woman. Or boy. Sometimes at a certain age, we say, "Look, it would be better for this person to be a come a woman." So we just change everything into a woman. And sometimes they are seven years. We say, "Look, if we this, we have to become a woman." So to do everything, you become a woman. You get it? So, listen, it's not a medical, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> I know you are interested in that, but listen. Are you listening? Try and listen, get it carefully. It's the most important. I'm telling you, you see, you can be in Sydney for 30 years. Look at this man. How many years? 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> we are still not seeing the Australian dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if it's only his name can change to Parker and he become a real adopted Australian, you see that he's entering. It's the same thing with the ministry. If you can somehow get into the stream. So, Papa Hagen, I decided to follow. But you see, what I'm saying, I didn't know that I was doing it. I now know that's why I'm sharing with you. But I was following him without knowing that I was following him. 
Then I didn't know what I was doing. I'm sharing with you because now that I've grown in the Lord and I've been the bishop, I look back and I realize what I was doing. But at that time I didn't know I was just doing it. Because I just like him. Do you understand? I like what he was doing. And I, I really like when I really preach, I really, really like it. And I can play one tape more than seventy hundred times. And I will listen even time. One day I was playing his tape somewhere. I was in Malaysia. My wife went out to the room, she came in, I was just the man was he was he had finished preaching, he was speaking in tongues. Even the tongues I liked it. I didn't know why I liked it. Then she came and she made a comment said, I asked for you and this man. You see, I'm lucky that he he wasn't a woman. <laughs> <laughs> As for you and this man, but she has seen that. And many people, when they heard of him, he was dead. Immediately, they thought about. But some people even thought that I was going for the funeral, but I couldn't. I couldn't go, so I sent somebody. You see. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that you can actually become a son. One day, I was listening to a tape by Kenneth Hagin, and I was praying in a room in a hospital way down in Ghana somewhere and as I was praying in the middle of the night you get it I was kneeling down like this I was kneeling down and I was praying oh God and I fell asleep how many have prayed and you have fallen asleep before yeah. it's not strange eh? but at least you are praying yeah you are there one day I, I fell asleep, I was praying, I fell asleep, I woke up, I was so sad. And the Lord told me, I have watched you in this chair. See, I sat in the chair, when I opened my eyes, it was morning. I slept throughout the whole day, same position. I was so sad, but the Lord said, I have watched you. You tried to come to talk to me for the whole night, only that your flesh. So at least your going is a message. Your sitting there is a message. Is it not? So don't be discouraged when you are sleeping. Anyway, I was sleeping. Peter went to preach. He was praying. He fell asleep and he had a vision. So I was praying. I fell asleep, but I woke up. At about 3 a.m. I was praying. And the tape was there. Auto reverse. Always. I just like. I knew, as for that tape, I heard it. But I liked the tape. So it was playing. It was playing. Back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. The tape recorder was a red, Sony red system. 1988. I was praying. Then suddenly something jumped out of the tape and came into me here. And then I heard a voice in the room. And the voice said, from today you can teach. That was in 1988. Since then, I a church like this. Since then, I've been teaching. This is a spiritual thing. I've been teaching and I've been preaching. And if you look at my ministry closely, you realize that for what the Lord has used Papa Hagen to do, I can even see that the Lord is using me to do. Because Papa Hagen, his main ministry, he didn't have a church even. He was training pastors, workers, all the time. Bible school that he set up and he was training. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm using that same anointing, teaching. I started to write books. Many of my books are about the ministry. Many of Papa Hagen's books are about the ministry. Now I've written over 50 books. Do you understand what I'm saying? And through the pastors and so on that I've, I've trained, churches, not just that I have graduated them from Bible school, but there are churches just like how you are here. All over are coming forth. And you can see. So you, you begin to see that the son, it looks like his father. Even when I'm preaching, naturally I talk about things that are about the ministry. So these type of topics of money, this, how to be successful. I know that I've taught all of them before. I have some of them. But it's not natural. Because that's not the type of anointing and flow that I, I, I'm interested much in. And if you come under my ministry and I'm able to teach you and train you, you are likely to become a minister. Quite likely. Before you realize. Even if you were very bad before, you are likely to to be one day one of my pastors he was, he was very bad in the world a young girl came to him and said you are my father you 19 years old you are my father How? Who, what do you mean my mother told her that there were four 
boys gala do you know gala four boys on one lady and she doesn't know who impregnated her so she she saw that this pastor is now doing well she chose him to be the father (laughs) 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 mercy and atonement The point that I'm trying to make is that even if you are very bad, the anointing comes on you. You can become a great man, a woman of God. Do you believe in such things? It's a spiritual thing. That's why you ask for the church, you can be in it for many years. You will never tap into the thing. But the day that you become a son, the day that you, you see, to become a son is to follow, to come after, to press, to be near. Oh, Father, which are up. I see you higher. You see, hallowed be thy name. I praise you. I believe in you. I admire you. You get it? There are people in this church, not everybody admires me. And I don't blame them because I have a lot of faults. Amen? I don't blame you if you don't admire me. It's not easy to admire a human being. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not easy to admire a human being. And I don't blame anybody who does that. But it takes, like Kenneth Hagin, I have been criticized. There's even books, they've written books about him. But me, I, I, I like the person. <laughs> but I still like him. You get what I'm saying? The, all those things don't affect me. I don't, he doesn't do it. I, I rather like the person more. Even the criticism crowd, when I read it, it rather turns into praises. That's how to become a son. And that's why there are not many sons. There are many members. I have many, many church members all around the world but i don't have as many sons that's why jesus said that the worker the the the, the, the harvest benches by the laborers are few as for the members there are thousands but the laborers and the workers they are very few may you become a laborer Amen. may you become a son Amen. now if you are in this church you see pastor peter can be your pastor but he can also be your father and i'm not saying by calling the person papa One day you call and he'll say, Are you why do you call me? <laughs> what is the similarity between me and you? You are always dancing to unbeliever music. Have you seen me dancing to unbeliever music? What is the similarity between me and you? Amen. May you become a son. My son, my son, Timothy. My son. My son. When you read Second Timothy chapter two, verse one, it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the in the no not the power of it. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus in you or whatever. You know. And the things which thou hast heard of me, the same commit thou to faithful men. You see, he told him what to preach. You cannot tell somebody who is not your son what to preach. Hey, can I go to Brian Houston and tell him what to preach? You know Brian Houston in uh Hell songs. How can I go to and say, Thou therefore my son, uh, what I'm preaching, preaching? No, he's not my son. He's either a colleague in the ministry or he's greater than me or whatever. How can I tell him what to preach? I can tell my children what to preach, just like I can tell my child what school to go to. My child is going to the school that I chose. You can't choose. I choose. I see you becoming sons. Amen. I see you becoming daughters. Amen. Make yourself a son. I said, make yourself a son. Amen. When Papa Hagen died, I am I'm not sure whether I'm sadder within me when my own father died or when Papa Hagen died. I'm not sure. And just like Elijah, Elisha, Mr. Shafat's son. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> when Elijah, who was not Mr. Shaphat, in fact, we never hear of Mr. Shaphat again. Elijah never attended his own father's funeral. <laughs> but when Elijah went, he said, My father, my father. And you see, some of you in the church, you realize that by coming into a church, God has given you a father. And even things that your own house you cannot hear and learn, you come into the house of God and you learn them. And some of you, you realize that even your parents, and the things you learn, you didn't know a good family. 
a normal life some of you your mother had boyfriends multiple you get it a father had girlfriends but John, you didn't stay in a normal house stay with this person small stay with this person it's not normal or you're, so so you are you are already abnormal so it's the church that is going to make you normal amen, amen. some of you you don't know how to be fathers or husbands at all if you are going to follow the example of your real earthly biological father then you will be a very bad father and a very very bad husband i pray for your marriage and some of you, if you are to follow the behavior of your mother, oh! <laughs> fighting tiger, crouching tiger, <laughs> who never care. There are some mothers who never, they just want to give birth so that they will say that they've given birth, but they don't care about their children. They don't care about their husband. They were more than tigers in the house, always fighting. They drove away their husband to go and have affairs. There are some men who never have had affairs. It was their mother who made it. Only that you will not know when you are young. When you grow, you will see that ah, there is another side. There is another side to the whole picture. Marriage takes two, not one. And all of us are bad. All the husbands and the wives are. We are all flesh. Men were not made worse than women. Women were not made worse than women were not made worse than men. In fact, women rather are weaker vessels. So be careful. When you see an aircraft carrier driving, moving on the and he meets Hurricane Isabel, you just do. I, I was once on a flight with somebody who was going to repair one of the aircraft carriers, American. So I asked him, What are you going to say? I'm going to repair the air conditioner. The air conditioner is poor. So I said, What kind of, how many people are there? He said, 5,000 people on the ship. 5,000 people on, on one ship with aeroplanes and everything. And I said, how do you get electricity? He said, oh, we use nuclear, nuclear power. Each of those things, he said, nuclear animal that is working. So when it meets Isabella, uh, Hurricane Isabella, she just... <laughs> but when a weaker ship or a weaker vessel, do 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 SS Apapa. <laughs> No, 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 no. I miss it. Hurricane Isabel. <coughs> okay, you see that? Pa, 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 pa. The thing is taking you off course. And when Isabella finishes, then you realize that, ah, where are we now? <laughs> we have to come back. That's the difference between a man and a woman. <laughs> oh, you don't understand weaker vessel. Weaker vessel means weaker vessel. I didn't say it to go and see the one who wrote the Bible. <laughs> may you become a son and may you become a daughter. Yes. When you become a son, your mouth is wide open and you trust, you believe, you flow. God blesses you. Stand to your feet. have been blessed by this powerful teaching by Bishop Dal Heward Mills. For further information on Bishop Heward Mills books, tapes, CDs and DVDs, please write to Vision Bookshop, PO Box KB114, Kolebu, Accra, Ghana or call 021-249-871 That's 021-249-871 Email Vision Bookshop at dalhewardmills.org God richly bless you.